All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Boulder County Campus, Invo Campus Involvement Fair. Um, this is day two. My name is Cody Phelps, she, her, hers pronouns. I'm the student activities coordinator in the student life office at Boulder County Campus. Um, we had our first session yesterday with five different organizations. Um, and so just a quick note, we recorded that session. I'm recording this one right now. Uh, and so both videos will be up on the club's webpage uh, for you all, which you can find by going to the frontrange.edu homepage. And then when you select student organizations involvement from the getting involved drop down menu. And so that's where you'll find all the information about our different clubs on there and who to contact and what they're about. Um, each of our club representatives here today will have time to present on their organization. Um, and before we begin with our first panelist, I want to tell you a bit about some student life updates. Uh, so let me share my screen with you all. All right. So um, we do have our wolf pantry up and running for the fall. Uh, that's our food pantry here on campus, in case you're not aware. Anyone with an S number can access it. Uh, we are doing things a little different because of uh, taking COVID precautions. So this link right here, this tiny URL that you see, um, that's what you would use. There's a form that you would fill out. Um, you can do that once a week. And there's some time slots to pick up those, those pantry items. Um, so please use that form. All the instructions are on that form as well. So you can visit that link to read more about it. Um, we do have student government elections today. Uh, you'll hear from CJ a bit more about student government later, um, but those are this week on the 16th and 17th. And that link is where you go vote. It's all electronic voting. Um, so that is right there. And then finally, we have Student Life has a new Instagram account. So that is our handle. Please, please, please follow us. Um, it's the best way all of these links, so links for the elections and the food pantry links are going to be on that account. Um, we also post event information and fun stories um, that you can participate in. So please follow us. And my contact information is below. So if you have any questions about any of these things, please call me or email me. Um, I'm also on campus normally on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So uh, we could meet social distance uh, safely and talk about those things if you have questions. Um, so yeah, that is what I had to share with you all. And so our first panelist is going to be Willie with the Veterans Club. So go ahead, Willie. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Willie. I am the representative for the Veterans Club. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about the Veterans Club. Uh, it's a club for any active um, service member or veteran service member, anyone that has served any period of time in the United States uh, military um, and possibly uh, law enforcement, but it would also be included in that. Um, we're looking to get a little bit more involvement because as any veteran knows, veterans need a community. We went through things in our life that many people don't understand and we had that camaraderie for a time in our lives that was very important to us only to be kind of ripped out of that and sent back into a world that doesn't have the structure it doesn't have the you know the friendships and the closeness that we're used to so a veterans the veterans club is going to be a place for people to come together um, to build that camaraderie to build that sense of community again um, with people who have shared experiences um, right now, uh, we don't have very many members, so we are looking to build upon that. Um, I'm looking to meet once a month uh, and more often if the members decide that's what they want to do. We don't currently have a mission set up. Um, so my hope is to get a, a good group of people together, come up with what we want our mission to be, what we want our you know monthly or weekly or you know, however often our meeting is going to be, what we want those to look like. Um, really, I just want to be kind of the facilitator to set everything up to, to help guide um, guide the club to where the members think it should be and 
and to do events that the members are, think are important for the community. Um, I, I do work in campus security at the BCC campus, so I am always available if you want to come and talk to me. Um, if you just want to email me, that's fine too. Um, I'm always there to talk about it. I am always there to answer any questions you might have. And if I don't have an answer, I will tell you where you can find that answer. So uh, thank you for your time. And I really, uh, I really hope that you uh, reach out to me. Thank you, Willie. Appreciate that. All right. And then our next group is International Affairs. So the presenter, Serena Pargas Vega, she is the president of that organization, but unfortunately she was sick today, so she wasn't able to make it, but I will cover for her. Um, so let me share the information that she sent me. All right, can you all see that image? Okay, great. Um, so the mission of the International Affairs Club is to study and keep up with current events and have fun, lively discussions about causes, possible outcomes, and planning world domination. That's what Serena wrote. I don't know if that's in their official mission statement or not. Um, in the past, they have done big events such as our act, their actor analysis on the Syrian civil war, and they did have a canceled event due to campus closures on the disinformation campaigns, and they've done smaller events too such as their open forum discussion on the Hong Kong protests and cyber warfare. So lots of really interesting stuff that this club has done and the students have really taken the lead on. Um, the only requirements to join International Affairs Club are to be human. So I think Serena would say that pet mascots are welcome. Uh, she has a cat, Aria, that she loves very much. Um, we, you can ask her later if that is true, if she would let pet mascots, but I think she would say yes. <laughs> um, they do meet on Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. via Zoom, which you can see on the slide that I'm sharing here. Uh, you can also find Serena's email there at the bottom um, and their faculty advisor. So please email either Serena or Ian, uh, Dr. Feinhandler, if you want to get in touch. Uh, the Zoom link is there as well, so you have that. Um, Serena wanted to share her personal investment with why she's a part of the International Affairs Club. Um, and it's in part because it's something that she loves to study. Um, and that's her, she's majoring in international affairs as well. Uh, she's made lots of great friends with similar interests. Uh, being a part of this club has helped her with professional development, as well as helping her to be more comfortable in expressing herself in front of others. Uh, especially, I think, in due, due in part to those presentations that International Affairs Club uh, puts on. And she says she's really found her niche here. Um, and aside from being a great resume booster, she thinks that joining this great club um, will look good because while they have an academic agenda, they're also just fun loving nerds that love to talk about current events and current political phenomena. Um, they do have leadership positions available, uh, so you're welcome to join. Now is a great opportunity to join if you're looking for um, an extra resume booster and holding a position in a club, uh, but also folks are just welcome to join in general um, and not have to hold a position. Uh, so that's what I have to share about international affairs. The cool club, they do lots of cool stuff on campus. Um, and yeah, contact Serena or Dr. Feinhandler if you want more information or myself and I can pass it along to them too. Awesome. All right, on to our next presenter is Student Government Association with CJ. Hello, I, I'm CJ. I use they, them pronouns. Um, so I have had two prior terms as secretary and currently running for vice president of student government. Uh, so we are students that wanna make a difference for our peers on campus. Um, we work in close proximity with uh, student affairs and higher administration. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, we meet on Mondays at 4 to 5, 
uh, via WebEx right now. Hopefully we can get back to in-person meetings soon. Um, this is also a good resume booster and we're looking for new members. So if you feel like running, please do. That's all. CJ, why did you join the student government? Well, actually, one of my friends who graduated and moved on to CU Boulder nagged me until I joined. However, it's become a huge part of my life and uh, it's great learning experiences and the friendships that I've made are gonna be lifelong. And it's a fantastic group of people and it just gets better with each semester. That's awesome. And it, what do you think you've learned so far from like skills you've gained, things you've learned aside from the friendships and connections you've made? Well, I'm still not great with public speaking, but um, I'm getting better. <laughs> I think it's mostly professionalism. I mean, I've taken professionalism and people's skills and translated that to my job. And it's affected every aspect of my life. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm one of the co-advisors for student government, so I can also say and add on to what CJ was saying. Please, please, please join. They are your elected student body representatives, and so they're supposed to be the voice for the students. Um, so again, elections are this Wednesday and Thursday, so it's really important uh, that you all go and vote. Um, student government people, candidates, I should say, aren't elected if they're not voted in. So it's not just a given, even if it's just one person running for a certain position. Um, and on the ballot itself, you can choose to vote for that person or not. Um, and so you'll see that when you go, go look at it. Um, and yeah, we do have still positions available. Um, like CJ mentioned, most of our meetings are open too. So even as a student um, member of the student body, you can come and attend those meetings um, when they're open, which most of them are and available. Um, let's see what else. I think that's the main thing. Anything else you want to add, CJ? I don't know. I don't remember having any closed meetings in the time that I've been on student government, but um, yeah, beyond that, I think between the two of us, we got it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, so Ashley, with the Meditation Club, we'll go ahead and have you go next if you're ready. Oops. Are you muted? Now we can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. Sorry. Um, do you do do you put up the slideshow for me? No, let me I can give you oops. <clears throat> I'm passing presenter privileges to you. So you should be able to share it yourself. But if you okay. have issues, let me know and I can do it. Um, you know what? I created it on a different computer, actually. Let's see. I should be able to get it from my, you know, I don't have any idea how to do that. <laughs> I'm going to be really honest. <laughs> well, if it's easier, I can do it. You can share it directly from Canva. And present it if you want, but it's so I go to share an application web browser. Okay. You have Canva open. No. Let's see. Oh boy. Oh, I kind of get this now. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm in. Am I already signed in? I am.
you know what I did I can create why won't it let me can you sign can you share it Cody sorry I'll pull it up yeah it's just not letting me go no problem Yay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my name is Ashley Connolly. I am one of the two mental health counselors at the Boulder County campus. And every week I run a guided weekly meditation group. It's it's online. Um, so you can do it in the comfort of your own home. Uh, it's every Tuesday from 11 to 1130 a.m. And later on in the slides, I show um, the my personal room link for WebEx to um, access the the meeting. Um, I make it go to the next slide. Oh, oh, there we go. So um, there are thousands and thousands of studies, um, scientific studies showing the benefits of meditation, and I've only listed a few here. But I wanted to tailor the benefits specifically to what students report um, from the benefits of regularly meditating. Um, so they report that they that their stress levels decrease, that they have an improved level of focus, which in turn enhances cognitive functioning. Um, it reduces their anxiety and depression. They feel an increase in motivation. There's a sense of being really clear about what your goals are and being inspired to work towards them. It builds confidence and I want to add not only does it build confidence, but um, regular meditation can really help nurture an attitude of gratitude and self compassion. 2 things that are really necessary in today's world. And then a lot of students say that it really helps them manage test taking anxiety. If that is something that you have, um, believe it or not, the practice of meditation outside of the test taking room can actually really come in handy while you're sitting down to take a test and you can feel that anxiety coming up. What you learn through meditation, you can apply directly to calming yourself down as you prepare to take a test. Um, so all of this results in better grades, stress management, and an overall sense of well-being. Um, I mean, there are also uh, physical benefits of meditation. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Improved sleep. Um, let's see if anybody wants to throw some in there. Go ahead that I'm not mentioning. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I would just like to say that um, in today's really crazy world, the I've been running the meditation group on Tuesdays and about three people have been showing up regularly. And I can't tell you how lovely it is to feel connected to those three people um, in such a, um, a mindful present way. And I just feel like that's really important today with there being so much isolation because of the pandemic. Um, that that connection with our our peers and other people of like mind is really wonderful. Um, we had the meditation this morning and it just it just there's a nice element of practicing with people. Not that practicing on your own. Isn't nice, but there's a there's a rich richness that happens when you get to sit with other people. The other piece I want to say about meditation is that if you decide just to meditate on your own, that's fine. There are thousands of um, apps for meditation that you can download. And meditation does not mean you have to meditate an hour every day. I don't meditate an hour every day. Um, there are people who do and who can and who love it. And if you're one of those people, I envy you. But there are people like me who can just about sustain 15 to 20 minutes. And then I need to move on. So you meditate in a way that's going to be successful for you. So if you ever have any questions about 
just a meditation practice, please, please, please reach out to me. Be happy to teach you some about meditation if you just want to practice it on your own. And I move to the next slide. Oh, thanks, Cody. So absolutely no experience is necessary. Um, you, you don't have to ever have meditated before. Um, it's drop in, which is nice. You don't have to sign up and you can kind of decide on a whim if you want to show up. And that is a WebEx format. So there's my personal room. Um, you should be able to type that in and access my personal room. And then once I join the personal room, I let you enter and we can begin. Um, that's all that I had, Any, unless people have questions or want to add anything. I was wondering, Ashley, um, do you feel like you get just as much out of it when you're being the one kind of leading people through? You were kind of talking about that compared to if you were as a participant, I guess, rather than a host. I mean, the, the experience is, is definitely different. Um, I don't get to sink for, I get to sink as deeply, but maybe, but in little pieces when I'm facilitating um, because I come out and, and I'm kind of also thinking about what I want to say to give some instruction to other people. But I can say that the, the feeling of connection is very present and I can, the benefit to me is just the same as it is to, to what I hope other people are experiencing, which is I feel myself slowing down. I feel myself breathing into any tension in my body and letting it go. Uh, I feel connected to the people who have shown up. So it's really lovely. And I love being a facilitator, it's fun. Yeah. And I guess one other question I had for you was, um, I feel like I see mindfulness and meditation kind of interchanged. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if you could speak to, like, if there's a difference, are they actually interchangeable or mean the same thing? Yeah, if you could just yeah. talk about that a little bit. Well, that's an excellent, excellent question. So mindfulness is what you're practicing when you meditate. Right. <laughs> so, so mindfulness is a state of being and meditation is a practice. So, um, the, so what's lovely <clears throat> is that when you practice mindfulness and meditation with practice, you start being able to carry mindfulness with you throughout your day. <clears throat> so you can learn to be mindful while you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You can learn to be mindful when you're getting in an argument with somebody and you, you wanna respond to the situation instead of react to the situation. Uh, you can be mindful while you're tying your shoelaces. Um, so meditation is the way we practice mindfulness. Does that help? Yeah, I think that's super interesting. Um, I feel like personally, I've heard a lot about mindfulness and like there's mindfulness apps and things. Um, yeah, so it's interesting to hear it framed that way. Yeah, people, a lot of people, I mean, they do get interchanged and it, it, sometimes it's called mindfulness meditation, you know, <laughs> so, right. um, but really it's the uh, meditation is learning how to be more mindful. And does everybody know when I say the word mindful, does that need some de some definition? Sure, yeah, let's define it. So to be mindful is to, the way I always like to describe it is, do you remember those old books when you would flip through it, you would see the person moving? But if you went through each page, it was a frame of a person. So I like to describe mindfulness as slowing down. So you're flipping through each page of motion and you're not you know spreading speeding through it so mindfulness is a state of being present in the moment from moment to moment with curiosity non-judgment and compassion so when we are mindful we start to be able to um, notice what's arising in us and make conscious choices of how we want to respond to what's happening inside and outside of us. Does yeah. anybody want to speak to, to um, how they uh, find mindfulness useful or how they would define it? 
Yeah, any of our panelists can. Yeah, I'm totally open them. to hearing what other people have to say. I feel like for me, I can go first, but I feel like for me, um, <clears throat> it is really just trying to like be present in the moment, which is my are bus being busy and like right it, my brain kind of gets pulled into all these different directions um yep. and i think for my job in particular like things got kind of slow for a moment with you know the pandemic and school shutting down and now everything's kind of picking up again so i feel like i'm being pulled in a lot of different areas um and so i think it's important for me to try to like have like you said like have that like stop in time to just be like okay what am i feeling doing thinking whatever right in, in this moment um and to be like grounded i suppose um which is hard i have a hard time with it to be totally yes. honest with you um but like i think one thing that i did recently was take a bath and like the and put music on and mm -hmm. like read a book right and and that helps me kind of slow down I absolutely so, yeah i don't know does anyone else have anything that they want to share of our panel i don't no. incorporate uh, mindfulness into my job it's yeah. a it's a very exhausting line of work mm -hmm. and we work with difficult people all the time, but I really have to stop and figure out what I'm feeling before reacting Beautiful. to all of these different situations. Yeah, you just gave me goosebumps. Okay. Yeah, it's the, you know, mindfulness and meditation are about cultivating um, equanimity which is the ability to stay grounded in spite of all the chaos. So that's what you're describing, CJ, is <laughs> coming back to center in spite of everything that's happening. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Ashley. DJ, did you, you don't have to, but did you want to add anything of your own personal experience with that? With like kind of you know closing my eyes, emptying my mind, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. There isn't an example coming to me immediately. I now I feel like not participating. I'm sorry. It's fine. But yeah, See, that's like, fine. It's, it's, I think that like I overthink a lot. I tend to get kind of overwhelmed and anxious and, you know, those are some good principles to follow. Just like close your eyes, just start emptying your mind, thinking about the present moment. Actually, it's something I got to do right now. Now I think about it because I am starting to. Out. <laughs> yeah. So if you just, if you just drop the story in your head and just bring yourself into the present moment with your breath, you'll feel that shift. Yeah. Mindfulness is excellent. For anxiety, I have anxiety myself, and it's um, it has completely shifted my relationship with my anxiety. So, for people who have anxiety, I highly recommend learning a mindfulness or a meditation practice, and I'm happy to teach that in whatever way feels right to you. I really appreciate it. I have to stop into one of those meetings sometime. Yeah, I hope you will. I hope you will. And there's no. Um, you don't have to um, speak or anything. You can just soak it up. <clears throat> yeah. Just yeah. tune in and listen. Tune in and listen. That's right. And really, really, DJ, that's what we're that's what we're trying to teach in meditation is how to listen and have a conversation with yourself. Because we're so busy out here. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, Ashley. Um, yes. I, such a I pleasure. Yeah, I mentioned this at the beginning, um, but when I post those video, the, the recordings of these events, um, they'll go on our YouTube page, but they'll be linked on the club's page. So I'll make sure that that YouTube description has all of the links um, and contact information um, for both today's session and yesterday's session.
So I'll make sure to include your your Zoom or your WebEx link. Excuse me. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Awesome. So uh, DJ, why don't we have you go next uh, to talk about Dim's bill? And I'll share. I'll um, give you the sh sharing presenter stuff, so you should be able to to share your screen. Thank you. Got to mm -hmm. say that mindfulness is really going to come in handy for me because I don't present a whole. Yeah. All right. Now, before I start, is there any way to get screen audio, or can y'all? I can go without it. It's fine. You should be able to, but you might have to disconnect your headphones. That's what I found uh, for yesterday's meeting. I'd rather use my headphones. That's my mic built in too, so no matter where I am, I could be here. I could be here and hear me. <laughs> and anyway, welcome to Jimsville, everyone. <laughs> kind of ridiculous name. What is Jimsville? All you're seeing is this blue and this. Not much going on, but let me tell you, we're gonna have some fun. Oh boy, Jimsville is Longmont's very first ever public smash ultimate club, and I am honored to be one of the founders. Our goal is to run casual weekly events at Front Range, no prizes, just, you know, there to have fun and make new friends. And then every once a semester, run a higher stakes tournament, have some prizes on the line, really compete. Jimsville is not just for college students, but also for both residents of Longmont who haven't had a public Smash Ultimate Weekly like ever, and people from outside to compete. There is absolutely no limit, no requirement, no entry fee. Just stop by and enter. More than anything, however, what I want to create is a tight knit, inclusive community where anyone can join and and not present. Where anyone can join, anyone can play, regardless of who they are, regardless of their gender, sex, race, creed. None of that really matters when the controller's in your hand, you know? So what have we done? We actually go way back to 2018. So we have quite a bit of experience under our belts. We've run a series of tournaments every semester at Boulder County campus called Front Range Crossover Clash. And this is something we aim to continue once conditions at the college are safe enough and we can completely get on board as a club. However, this year when we really started to turn things up, we ran a public smash up in the student commons to try and find a potential precedent, which has been our biggest struggle ever since our inception last February. We've also created a Discord community for anyone who's interested in Dimfield to come hang out, socialize, talk. And we're even running an online bi-weekly tournament for Discord users exclusively. Just kind of a way to hang out and bond over a favorite game while just about every in-person meetup is closed off. Now I've prepared a little bit of a slideshow, kind of focusing a little more on our excuse me, on the events that we've run in the past. Please take a look. This is the first time oh. this is one of my favorite experiences running an event, something I'm always gonna cherish. This is a fun one, just kind of a chill, little casual event. <laughs> That's awesome. This one we ran just for front range hoops, so we didn't get a whole lot of people, but it was still a good time. They introduced some timeless crossover class traditions. Oh, this is a big one. This is when we started to advertise to people outside of front range. We ended up getting 55 people from both Colorado and Wyoming. Definitely the most successful one we've run so far. And here's the one we don't talk about. This is the one which it's used kind of a storyline. It's with some sort of wrestling style beef. But I don't like to think it happened. This is when we started advertising our club to the college to try and find a potential precedent. It didn't work, but it was still a fun time. And finally, Jimsville Slider Sunday is our online bi-weekly exclusive to the Jimsville Discord community. We're going to be running one this Sunday if any of you are interested. And now this begs the question, how can you help? Because big problems surrounding Jim Seal, it's not actually a club yet. We don't have a president. We barely have a member board. We really, really want to get this going, especially by the time COVID ends and we can start hosting in IRL events. So first and foremost, what we need more than anything is a club president. We need a club president badly. 
a club president communicates with student life to reserve rooms and borrows money for prizes and food. This was kind of, um, so in the past, this was one of my friend's wheelhouses because he was a club president already, but all three of us have actually graduated from Front Range, so we cannot take up the role of president. Ideally, I want a president to be knowledgeable and passionate about who we are and what we stand for, and I want them to be able to do a good job taking up the reins. We also have a panel of members you could join. These members must be college students, at least 51%. So I will gladly take up the role as a member, but ideally I want some front range students to sign up as members. These members make executive decisions for the club along with the president. And these people should ideally understand what it takes to run a club like this and show passion. I don't want any meat puppets. <laughs> Actually, if you can't do any of that, participate. Just stop by, enter, compete, have fun, make friends. That's what we're all about. If you're saying, oh, I'm not that good at this game, but you still come and you still participate again and again and again, you are what gives gyms feel life. You are lifeblood, and we welcome you with open arms. We'll be regarded as a guest. This is how we advertise out, excuse me, this is how we allow people from outside the calls to participate. Because this isn't just for Front Range, this is for Longmont and beyond. And you can even just join our, our Discord community. We have the link here, we have a QR code. So if you're seeing this and you're interested at all in what we do, join, 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 join. We would welcome you. And with that out of the way, I wanna thank you all for attending the involvement fair. I don't know if it's actually over yet, but as far as I know, I was last in line. So on behalf of Cody and everyone here, thank you so much for participating. I'll leave this slide open for a while. Although there's going to be uploads, so you can just pause the video and I don't really know who else is here. I'll leave it open for just a little bit. In case anyone wants to scan the QR code, join the server, I'm not stopping you. But yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, DJ. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, we'll just add on to what DJ said. I am the advisor for this club. And so just and because of my role in student life, I know a bit about this too. Um, as he was mentioning, they do need a president. They were recruiting really hard uh, right before DJ and Jonathan, who was another alumni, uh, graduated. But then, of course, campus had to shut down early. Um, and so I think that really impacted their ability to get new members. Um, and uh, people that hold positions for any club do have to be a current fee paying front range student. Uh, and so that is what they are needing right now. Um, as he mentioned too, being a president is, is really, uh, it's kind of up to you and up to the club for how much responsibility you might take on in that role. Um, it's pretty easy to join an organization. It's pretty easy to get a leadership role in an organization. And it might sound really scary being like president, but it, it's not necessarily as scary as you might yeah, think well, it would be. <laughs> all you have to do is just communicate. You're pretty much our telegraph between the club and the college. Yes. So speaking of John, <laughs> he's in the chat, he's really excited for me to present and he asks, if I were a new participant, would I need to bring anything to weekly meetings? Should I bring an entire setup, which is a console with a monitor or just a controller? Ideally, if you have a full setup, you can easily bring, do it. The more setups we have, the faster our meetings can go, the more people we can support without going over time. But if you can't, then just your own controller would be perfect. You could also bring water, although there's a water fountain probably right outside the room. But other than that, you're pretty much gold. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, and as DJ mentioned too, they're doing all of their tournaments virtual right now. And I think DJ, you mentioned that there's video support um, if someone was new to maybe doing that virtually and what, how to do yeah, that. The, um, the platform we use for these tournaments has um, support guides all over their website. So I will definitely be willing to share them around in our Discord server should you choose to join. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, if anyone has any more questions about gyms, they'll please put it in the chat. Um, and before we go, I do want to share uh, some brief information about two, organiza two other organizations that weren't able to be here today. Um, 
Let me share my screen really quick. Oops, hold on one moment. No, maybe it won't let me. Okay, so just a brief overview about two other organizations that you all should be aware of. Um, Everybody's Business Club, their mission is we exist to educate students about building and maintaining a business of their own, as well as other career oriented activities. Um, so a lot of folks who are part of this club are either business majors or interested in being like entrepreneurs starting their own business. Um, they do some really cool events. Uh, they also are, I think, often attend uh, the Chamber Student Chamber Student Network, which is also a, a part of the greater sort of long, city of Longmont. So good networking opportunities there for community members, uh, for students to meet community members. I know that students have found internships and job oppor opportunities from, from going there. Um, and Chris McGilvray is one of the faculty advisors and his contact information is right there. Uh, and we also have the Medical Office Technology or MOT Club. Uh, their mission is uh, MOT Club promotes camaraderie, teamwork, leadership, and professionalism to those pursuing medical office careers. Um, so MOT is a area of study that you can do at Front Range. Um, CJ, I know, was doing it at one point. I don't know if you were still finishing that up, CJ, or if you switched, but. I graduated with Yay! And decided to go into something else. What did you say? I can't hear you. I, I graduated from the MOT program, but then came back because I decided to go a different route. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so this club is for folks who are part of that program or maybe are interested in learning more. Maybe you don't want to uh, get a certificate or a degree in that quite yet because you're still trying to figure out if it's the right fit for you. Um, and Carrie Williams is one of the advisors for that club as well. And there is her contact information too. Is that Dr. Carrie Williams? Yes. Is she the chiropractor? Oh, yeah. Yes, she is. Yes, she's an excellent yeah. chiropractor too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. Well, that is all the information I had. Thank you to our panelists. Um, any attendees, if you have further questions, feel free to contact any of the folks that are here right now or contact me and I can pass that information along. Um, I really appreciate you all being here today and hopefully we can get some folks involved. Um, and remember, check out the club's page on the frontrange.edu website because that's hopefully sometime this week I'll get those videos uploaded so folks will have access to that information. So awesome. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.